Riders on the storm. Riders on the storm. Into this house we're born. Into this world we're thrown. Dan Ryder, Probable Cause. It's October 2, 2022, Sunday night. Thanks for joining us in the chat room for this live premiere. Sunday evening, I got a few accidents to go over and uh, some things to talk to you about for the last seven days, general aviation fatals. We'll get to all those in a second. Before we do that, I'm going to talk about last week's uh, statistics and data. I'll show you that real quick here. The guy that's getting the free hat here this week uh, got 75 thumbs up, and here's his comment. I appreciate that a lot. I want you to know I read every single comment. And uh, last week's video that got taken down was only on there about six days. It got 73,000 views in six days, which is okay. And it also got 868 thousand minutes watched almost a million minutes watched which is just slightly lower than average but it's still uh, pretty good so we'll take that and i appreciate you guys watching the minutes watch translates to youtube doing its algorithm for me and it it propagates my videos based on minutes watched doesn't have anything to do with subscribers you can subscribe if you want if you want your alerts that's fine it has to do with minutes watched and that's always what i'm after i don't advertise if you notice the last four or five weeks worth of videos don't have any advertising so my anti-advertising campaign is working really good and i appreciate that i just got back from portland oregon went out there so the last five days have been kind of whirlwind let me explain to you what i did i jumped on the airlines went out to portland i'm doing some more db cooper research had to shoot some more b-roll video footage for db cooper deep family Family Secrets Part 2, and that's coming up. It's going to be released here real quick. While I was out there, got to meet a whole bunch of fans and uh, YouTube people out there. We did a thing at the uh, Victor 23 Brew Pub out there. It worked out really good. I was, I was shocked how many people showed up, and uh, I got a whole bunch of stuff out there, met some people, and I uh, took a few hats out there. The hats were gone quickly. I had no idea that many people would show up, um, but I got, uh, I got to meet a lot of you. I also got to meet the guy that gave me this. This is the uh, Boeing Y-15. It's an early 1940s uh, short STOL kind of an airplane that Boeing experiment. There's only one flying in the world that I know of. This guy has it, and he's invited me out there to go fly that with him in the very near future, and I'm going to definitely take him up on that. While I was there, I met a couple of pilots that had saves that they attributed to AQP in this video series. So I was very happy with that. I've got a little bit of video coming from those guys that are going to show you their crash footage of what they did and the fact that they were alive to go eat dinner because they pushed instead of pulled and they knew what to do. So it gives me some encouragement. I think it is working and I appreciate you guys watching and hanging here in here with me. D.B. Cooper, while I was out there, I gave a hat to a girl named Amy. Um, she deserved a hat. She, uh, uh, she gave me a ride around portland she was my personal uber driver for a full day to shoot video footage amy i appreciate you a lot and she got a hat and here's a picture of amy with her hat on she was very happy to get this special limited edition white hat and that was totally cool so that was portland now, while i was out there i was at pearson field now pearson is just directly across the river from pdx pearson's a little non-controlled field just a single runway june 28 of this year there was a bonanza crash there a guy named tom posey fatal crash of a bonanza i looked at this thing when it happened i could not figure out exactly what tom did um and i went back and realized it. let's take a look at the video footage i actually went to the crash scene while i was out there amy drove me out there and we walked out and we shot this video footage check this out dan Ryder, probable cause i'm down here at pearson field vancouver washington there's an important crash that happened here june 28 of this year november 444 papa mike the guy's name was tom posey crashed his V-35 Bonanza. I'm standing in the spot where that Bonanza first hit, and I'm going to tell you in detail exactly how he got here. The airplane ended up upside down and on fire directly across the runway on the opposite side, upside down, and Tom did not survive it. It's been a long time since that happened. A lot of people have called and asked, what happened to Tom? I can tell you in a nutshell here, Tom was a non- instrument rated private pilot in a v-35 and he took off immediately he was in the weather he should have confessed to atc because he was talking to atc he had a squawk and they could see him his problem was he was imc he was in the clouds and he did not tell them what his problem was tom tried to find this airport by himself and at the last second he did see it he did find it, but it was like 200 overcast and low vis and rain and fog. He tried to dive and maneuver for this runway to land on 26. 
but he got the thing slow and it stalled and it hit one wing first right here, bounced, took it into the air, it ended up inverted. And that's what happened to Tom. 444 Papa Mike, June 28, 2022. Tragic accident. Um, it'll be several more years before NTSB even produces anything on this. But for you VFR guys out there, if you get this thing in the air, you take it in there and you confess, take it over to the big airport, let them guide you down to a long runway and you'll be alive tomorrow to do it. Don't try to fight your way back to the airport. Tom didn't want to get in trouble is what he didn't want to do. He didn't want the government to know that he screwed up is all that happened here and it cost him his life. I'll show you the graphics. Here's the graphics on the screen right now for the map. Here's where he hit right here. Here's a picture of Tom's airplane upside down, and it was not good. Very well maintained airplane, good pilot, good everything, good airport. Just a bad, bad set of circumstances, and that's what happened to Tom Posey. So I, it, I got this video footage, and I'm showing it to you here right now. This is the actual footage, never before seen. I don't think this has ever been released anywhere. This is Tom's hard turn to try to join after he saw i know i said it was 200 overcast it's probably more like 200 broken visibility about a half he had a tiny little hole above the airport and he finally saw that runway last second and he turned and pulled the airplane stalled he he should not have been doing that and that's he should he should have confessed and gone to the other airport and gone in and taken a long runaway with some radar vectors and, and ask for help. Declare an emergency is all I'm asking for you to do out there. So let's take a look at uh, D.B. Cooper. This is definitely coming up. And here's a screenshot for D.B. Cooper Part 1. I want you to go back and take a look at that. Some uh, fascinating stuff. After D.B. Cooper, I left Portland Saturday morning. I flew back to Atlanta, jumped in a 172. I flew out, flew out to Pettigene, Arkansas for the Powered Parachute Convention out there at a state park, Pettigene State Park. A cool bunch of people out there, and I was intending to make a parachute jump out of a par powered parachute. We had to use a little bit of ADM there at the very end because we were out of daylight. I arrived a little bit late. I did not have time to rig cameras, rig stuff, brief, and do it safely. We aborted and we scrubbed. The powered parachute I wanted to jump out of had to leave early the next morning, so I didn't get to do it, but I did get a ride one. Here's some video footage of me in a powered parachute for the very first time, and I am amazed at the deck angle that this thing climbs at. These powered parachutes are 100 horsepower, and they go up. Check this out. On the way back from Pettigene in the 172, we're flying along and I'm coming into an airport here. I want to show you this concept about mid-airs and the traffic pattern. Listen into this, and I wanted to give you an example of what I'm talking about, about establishing communication with the other aircraft in the pattern. Don't just announce your position. Making an announcement does not solve anything. Listen to what I do here on this one. So I'm in flight in the Cessna 172, and uh, I'm going to illustrate the concept of coming into an airport. I know there's at least one, maybe two other people in the pattern here. My concept is not simply to announce my position where I am, but to establish communication with the other airplanes, and if necessary, work something out. So I'm going to give that a try here and see what happens. Speedway traffic, anybody else in the pattern? Speedway traffic, 394, sure, come back. Uh, Alright, we're on a 172, about 5 miles to the west, coming in. Do you want to practice instrument approach? Are you in the downwind right now? Uh, 3940 Quebec on upwind. I'll be looking for y'all on the approach. Okay, if you're on the upwind, I think it'll work out just about right. Uh, and we're doing a practice uh, approach to a full stop. Uh, all right, practice approach to a full stop. I'll be looking for y'all. Okay, you good with that? Uh, yes, sir. All right, so I don't know who the guy is, but I've established communication. Now I know that he's on the upwind for runway 6, and they're flying right traffic for 6. I'm on final for 6, and I'm doing a practice instrument approach. Actually, the guy that's flying this airplane is going to check uh, some nav stuff on the way in here. But I didn't just say that I'm on a 5-mile final. Yeah, they're taking a deep out of the plane. They're going to north-west, north-west, by the call. So I worked it out, up to and including 
asking the guy, are you okay with that? Now, now we've talked about it, and now we've got a deal. If he needs to do something different, he can, and if I need to do something different, I can. That's what happened in California. Each guy made religious position reports, but neither guy communicated and shook hands and made a deal on who goes first or what do you want to do. This is traffic pattern basics. If you need to extend your downwind, then extend it. But work it out with the other guy. Your position report in the traffic pattern is pointless. All right, so you, uh, your position now, we're just about to two and a half mile final runway six speedway. Well, we end down the carry. Speedway traffic, three nine four zero Quebec, turning right downwind runway six. I'll uh, extend my downwind for you all on final. All right, I appreciate that. I still don't have you in sight, but uh, we'll be well ahead of you, it looks like. Thank you. All right, so that's all it is. We've talked to the guy, and it works out that way. So September closed out. We actually had 28 general aviation fatals in the month of September. September had 30 days, so not quite one a day. A total of 50 people, 50 lives lost just in the month of September. Way too high. Our very much common denominator is always DMMS, minimum speed, flying too slow, stalling the airplane. Stall spin is clearly number one out of all of them. Each accident I look at very closely. I can't always tell exactly what the deal is. A lot of times it becomes pretty obvious by listening to the ATC tapes, looking at the radar data and all that kind of stuff. You can tell pretty closely exactly what the guy did. Let's take a look at the data here on the screen. So in the last seven days since the last Sunday night video, there's actually been five more, and I'm going to cover one more that didn't get included last week, and that's the lady up in Alaska. So let's take a look. Here she is. This was a Cessna 180 on floats. Her name was Janelle Rude in Alaska, and it happened on September 25, November 9728. Bravo. Crashed on takeoff. Here's the crash scene. I cannot figure out what happened here, but she... She distributed this Cessna 180 a long ways down the, the lake. It looks like one float came off first. It was a day VFR takeoff. I have no idea how this happened, but I'm trying to get information on that. The next one um, was on September 27, November 499 Alpha Golf. This is an AG915 in South Dakota. This is actually an auto gyro. One person died on board this. I don't know how, but this ended up in a smoking hole, and I don't know. I'm not much of an auto gyro fan in the first place. I'm not opposed to it. I just don't know much about them. Um, the next one was on the 28th, November 7, 4349, a Grumman AA5 in Arizona. This one's definitely uh, a DMOS accident. This is somebody that made a touch-and-go after their touch-and-go and turning onto the crosswind leg. They let it get slow, and they stalled at a low altitude, stalled, spun is everything i can tell so far still more information coming in about this but uh, this person died definitely dmms probably some strong tailwind uh, turning upwind to crosswind or something like that i don't know the impact uh, crater here is purely vertical there's nothing left this was definitely stall spin i don't know how they did this other than they were not paying attention or placarding or knowing anything about minimum maneuvering speed which applies after takeoff as well as it does on the approach Downwind to base, base to final, honor DMMS. After takeoff, stay VREF until you can acquire DMMS and then maintain DMMS in your turn from upwind to crosswind and you'll stay alive. Uh, the next one is a 172 in Minnesota, Duluth, Minnesota. This just happened at midnight last night, Saturday night, late last night, actually technically still October 1. Three people on a 172 on the approach to Duluth International Airport crashed into a house. All three are dead. Nobody in the house got hurt, but uh, crashed into the house in Duluth, Minnesota. So uh, a tragic month. I I can't tell for sure because I haven't been able to scout this out yet, but I think September set a record as far as number of fatal accidents, uh, generally fatal accidents for sure. 50 lives lost in the month. I believe that for sure does set a record. We lost 50 people just in September alone. So we, we got to start doing better. And for you people that uh, um, are writing to me and, and thanking me for uh, what I'm doing, I, I want you to know I very much appreciate that. I read your comments. I read your emails. I do not have a chance to respond to all emails, but I want to say thank you for your support and watching everything that we're uh, doing out here. 
I'm going to close this video with a little guitar tune. It was pretty impromptu, but we did Riders on the Storm last night at the campsite out in Arkansas, home of all the inbreeding and stuff like that. We played the banjo and stuff like that, but this tune popped up and I uh, recorded it on my cell phone. It's not much, but it's Riders on the Storm. The guy I was playing guitar with, talented guitar player, and he didn't know what I was doing. I just gave him the key and we turned it on and let it go. And that's what it is. I'm going to use that video for this week's closing video. And I want to say thank you very much for support. Remember, Airborne Animal Rescue is my website right here. I appreciate your support towards this channel, even $1 or $2 uh, towards uh, PayPal, Zelle, Cash App, or Venmo. Any one of them electronically helps me a lot in covering costs. I have a lot of traveling that I've done. I have a whole lot more traveling I still have to do. I still have to buy my own hotel and cheeseburgers every now and then. But I want you to know that I have lost weight. I, I have tremendously lost weight. I'm down to about 190, and I'm feeling really good. My new diet thing is working really good. Dylan is my main coach, and he's uh, taking me to the gym. We're working out, and I appreciate that. If you're a little on the pudgy side, you can do exactly what I did. Start pushing away from the table. Do a little bit of exercise. Man, it feels good. It really feels good to be uh, back and mobile and jogging and doing a few of those kind of things. I got a whole bunch more skydives I got to do in the very near future. A whole bunch of D.B. Cooper stuff is coming, so hang with me, and I do appreciate it. Let's cut to this Riders on the Storm video. It's coming here next. We're going to tell you a little itty bitty fledgling YouTube channel. Dan Ryder, Probable Cause. Down here at the Powered Parachute Convention, time to play guitars, and we are jamming out here. Got some Louisiana Cajun food. Let's play something. We don't have this choreographed yet, but we're going to do this in A minor. One, two, ready, go.